I'd like to give you a few notes on this worksheet called the RC resistors and capacitors. So basically putting a capacitor in series with the resistor with a battery and a switch and how that acts. So the mini lesson is essentially saying that a capacitor looks like a short circuit in the beginning. So I'm going to redraw this here. There's the switch. We got a resistor and we have a capacitor. So that's the circuit and this is 10 ohms and the EMF of the source is 24 volts. Little r being equal to zero ohms just means there's no internal resistance. And so the question is when you close the switch what's the initial current flowing in the circuit? So initially this just looks like a short circuit across there. It's like the capacitor is just a wire and so I is equal to EMF over R, 24 over 10, 2.4 amps. That's it. On to the next one. In the next case, we have same essential thing, but this time it is in a parallel configuration. All right, so this is 10 ohms and 24 volts in parallel with another resistor. This resistor is 4 ohms and there's the capacitor. So at time t is equal to 0 what we have is that again this looks like a short and so it's a 10 ohm in parallel with a 4 ohm. That's all it is. So initial current is 10 in parallel with Four. I think that's, well, I don't know what that resistance is. We'd have to figure out what the resistance is. Or actually what you can also do is just say, all right, I know that 24 volts across the 10 ohm like we did up here is 2.4 amps. And this current here, I is equal to 24 over 4, which is equal to 6 amps. And so collectively, I total is 8.4 amps. And we're done. That's at T is equal to zero. Now, part B, in B we're asking for T is equal to infinity. Well, when, when T is equal to infinity, this capacitor looks like an open circuit. So what I like to say is you could take that capacitor and rip it out of the circuit and throw it away. Oh, that eraser is bad. Let's try this one. So you just like erase this whole thing. Boop. In other words, it's open. It's almost like putting a switch here and you open the switch. And so that basically removes this whole branch over here. And so t the current in steady state conditions, meaning equilibrium or after a long time, the capacitor is fully charged and pushes back against the power supply just as hard as it pushes on the charges to put them onto the capacitor, which is a simplistic way of describing functionally what happens. So now really what we have is just this simple series circuit and we already figured out what that is, 2.4 amps in that branch. Nothing passes through here. And by the way, in the capacitor, what we had is, if we, we, if we look at current, well, let's do this. Let me go charge versus time in the capacitor. It looks like it ha has zero charge to begin with, and as current flows onto the capacitor, it slowly charges it up to the full charge. Now this means with the charge full that this could also be a graph of the voltage versus the time. A voltage versus the time as well as you're charging up the capacitor. Okay. And now let's look at the third one. Another piece of paper here. And the third example. That's this. So when the switch is closed, what's the initial current and the steady state current? And then when it's fully charged, what is it as well? 
All right, so back to this piece of paper. Let me let me uh, just kind of summarize this for you here. So initially, so we got these two resistors. There they are. Now this one leg, 10 ohms, 10 ohms, <coughs> and that's pretty straightforward, as is this over here. Now these are all 10 ohms to make this simple. And so what makes it quote unquote more complex is that we're putting a capacitor across here. So I0 is equal to no, this is EMF is 24 volts again with no internal resistance. I0 is equal to EMF over R total. So it's just a matter of getting R total in this circuit at the beginning. Well, at the beginning, this looks like a short circuit. So if we were going to redraw this whole thing, we would do this. Since this is a short circuit, you tell me if this looks the same. There's a 10. There's a 10. Now, since that's shorted across there, this is shorted across here, 10 and 10. But then this bottom side is the same, this is, this is all the same connection point if this is a short. And so I can do this. Isn't that the same thing? That's right. I thought it was. <laughs> so here's 10 and 10. Of course, these together in parallel make 5 ohms. This together in parallel makes 5 ohms. And then these are like, whoops, <laughs> two series 5 ohm resistors, which wouldn't be bad to draw, but that makes 10 ohms. So in other words, in the end, whoa, in the end what we have is simply 10 ohms, and so I0 is 2.4 amps. In the other situation, when we wait a long time, then this looks like an open. Boop, there it is, there's our circuit. But what you can see is a parallel, two parallel branches, each one has 10 and 10 in it. So that's the same thing as, okay, this is for I steady state. That's the same thing as drawing it like this. We got a 20 ohm, 10 and 10, and 10 and 10 on the other parallel branch. That's 20 ohms. And collectively, those two 20 ohms, it's going to be half, isn't it? 10 ohms. So in this case, it's the same goofy thing that we had over here. And so I steady state is also equal to, whoops, 2.4 amps. Same thing in this particular case. And don't be misled into thinking that if no matter what the resistors are, that this would be the case, since that's not true. But in the case where everything is symmetrical, when we got 10 ohms everywhere, you know, you, you can tell that this circuit looks different than this one. Nevertheless, you know, two 5 ohm in series is the same thing in this case as two 20 ohms in parallel. But it ends up looking that way because of the nature of how a capacitor functions in the beginning, which is like a short circuit, and in the end, like an open circuit. And so hopefully that gives you some confidence with understanding the basic function of a capacitor, at least at the beginning and the end. And keep in mind that in the intermediate time, in the intermediate time, uh, we have, as we're charging a capacitor up, the, the, you know, I showed you the voltage, the voltage and the charge, the Q and the, S and the, and the V, right? No charge at the beginning mean, means there's no potential difference across those plates and because that's where the potential difference comes from is separating the charge, charging up the capacitor. So it gradually rises to the maximum amount. This is generally the EMF of the source. But if we did 
a similar graph of the current versus time in a capacitor. The current looks like a I cannot write current. I like you small i for intermediate value. What is the current at the beginning? Well, the current at the beginning starts at a maximum value when you're charging. But then as it charges, it trails off nonlinearly to zero after it's fully charged. So after a long time has passed, the current goes to zero as the charge is maximum and the voltage is maximum. In fact, the voltage matches the source so that the source can't cause any more charge to flow on the capacitor. And that's it, folks. Hope that made sense.